Next I run the Jinnica. Grab the Jinnica bag. I generally just put the prod straight in. And firstly I like to run the furling line and that's so when we do hoist the Jenica it can't unfurl and if there's a bit of breeze around. So get the furling line, go through the four stay strop. Underneath the Cunningham line here and that just means when you pull Cunningham on it doesn't uncleat it involuntary. And then I clip this on into here. Good to go, and then I'll just click that off. Next I get the Jenica halyard. And we just make sure it's all clear. Again, we tie the halyard on with a simple bowline. And then we can just hoist her up. And I'll just give that a little bit of tension. Now, I coil up the Jenica halyard. I've seen all sorts of ways to do this, but I find the quickest and easiest is just to wrap it around my hand till I've got about that much length. Then I simply grab that, put a loop in the line, and do a half hitch like that, and I'll probably do four or five of them, depending on how much tail I want and I'm happy with about that much, so I'll leave that there. Next we grab our sheets. All right, I toss that down there, save a bit of time walking, and through the clue, just do a figure of eight, stop a knot on that side. Next walk around to run the sheets. So we've got to make sure we go through the right right way in these blocks. Uh, I always have mine on pressure sensitive ratchet, so it means that they're free to run until you get a little bit of load, and then the ratchet starts working. Uh, what that does is it means when you furl the Jenica or go for a jibe, you're not fighting the ratchet, but obviously when there's load in the sheets, it comes on. So they're working right. Uh, you'll notice I go inside the side stays, bit different to a lot of other boats and back up to the Jenica through the other side. If you have trouble feeding this through you can actually use the other sheet to help push it so I allow a bit of tail there I sort of semi feed that in and then you pull the other line and it helps pull it through then we do a figure of eight that side and Jenica is ready to go now I'll just fill up that last little bit, find the right line, there it is, and cleat it off. Now there's a number of ways I've seen people do this, some roll from the top down, others the bottom up, uh, to me it doesn't really matter so much, um, I just like to clip it onto the force stay first because if you do get any breeze just means it's uh, it's already on the boat, it's not going to blow away. Alright, while I'm here I can put the halyard on, so leave that cleated and then we just want to check, now you'll see there I've got it inside the main halyard so I'm just going to tidy that up, make sure it's all clear. Now, one common problem, which I've seen happen a lot, is when the main halyard is inside the jib, and you won't notice that till you go to hoist your main, and you'll have to drop your jib again. So, just tie a simple bowline on here. And at the bottom, I just shackle that on.
and finger tights, all good. Now this um, bottom jib hank here, you don't actually need to have it. Some people like to put it right around the actual lashings there. Um, I've played around with it, doesn't seem to make much difference to performance. Then we grab our jib sheet. So what we do is we just feed the ends through the cleat like that. And then we go into the clue position for the day, whatever it may be. Now the first bowline I tie here is quite a loose one. You'll see this in some of the rigging tips I've written. So, got that end. I uh, always run the jib sheet over the furling line. I find that keeps the boat tidier. And then, second bow line we go through the first one. And that is the jib sheet good to go. Now the reason I do that is, if I want to change on the water, I can actually easily undo this one while the other jib sheet's holding the sail so it doesn't flap around, and vice versa. Try it out, you'll like it. Uh, now we can pull the sail up. And as I pull it up, I just double check that I've got all the jib hanks on. Occasionally you might miss one or two. All right. Now I'll just show you how I do my three to one purchase on the jib, so. Jibs all the way up. Some people choose to leave a knot permanently in the halyard. Uh, I find tying a new one each time is good. So I just do a couple of loops in the halyard there and feed down the line back through itself. So I've got a loop. It's sort of like a, a trucker's hitch. I'm sure there's some truckers out there which would uh, have a few comments about that. But it seems to do me just fine. And then we go back through the block. See again you can actually, if you struggle, you can help pull the line through with the other end. And then you'll see I've got my 3 to 1 there. So that just helps uh, in adjusting the tension. And same deal as the Jenica halyard. I just take up the tail by wrapping it around my hand. And I actually like to leave a reasonable sized tail on the jib halyard because it means while you're out sailing you can actually adjust your jib halyard tension if there's changes in the breeze. So that's our jib all, all set to go. Now it's time for the main. Now I'm always a fan of rolling the wetter sails from the bottom up. That just means when you come to rig them, you can just go straight into the mast track and uh, hoist them up. So. I'll just undo the halyard here. Now we want to check that we've got no tangles. I've managed to get that behind the side stay. That's all free to roll. Shackle it on to the main. Alright, and now we're ready to hoist it up, so just uh, as we hoist it we watch that we don't come out of the feeder there at all. And it's always good to have the boat pointed straight into the wind at this stage. You'll find if it uh, gets quite hard to pull, uh, if the main's at all off centre, it's going to load up the track, so I just push it towards the centre as it comes up. Uh, the other thing <coughs> you may notice didn't happen this time, but often that batten will catch on the Jenica sheet there. So you just want to watch that again if it feels a bit tight. So we get the main up and then we lock in the halyard. You can see up there how the mechanism works. So to double check that it's all locked in, I just give the tail a bit of a tug down. That's definitely locked. Now we can put the Cunning them on and strap the tack around the mast. And then I just pull a bit of slack out of there. What you don't want to do is crank your cunning them on while you leave your boat on the beach. 
uh, if there's any breeze, the sail is going to flap around a whole lot. And uh, people think they're depowering the sail by pulling and cutting them on, but it uh, doesn't work that way. So I always like to just push up the track a little, and that stops it from rattling around. Now we tie the main heliot off. Just go around a couple of times. Now you don't actually want to pull much tension on this because you're relying on the halyard lock at the top of the mast. So this is just to tidy it up basically. Now before I put the Velcro on, I just hook the halyards over the horn there so they can't fall down. Now what I'd normally do now is actually strap the Velcro around that nice and tight that's good to go. Uh, this is our demo boat and I think Miranda must have ripped it off in a race. It was just too much drag, so uh, you want to watch that one. <laughs> Alright, so last thing to do before we go in the water of the main is put it in. I always make sure uh, that the main sheet is uh, fully eased, just in case you do get a, a puff and you're not prepared for it. So. I just pull that all the way out. I'll leave it there until I'm in the water and at that point you can hook it into your clue board.